Well, the first thing this morning, a uh, yet another box of carriages arrived. Now, I do believe it says from Widnes, so it must be from Hattons, and that means Genesis coaches, carriages, whatever. Now, I've got a Sterling, you know, Rapido Sterling single, which is a great northern loco. And for years, there's been no coaches available for it. So when the Genesis ones came out a few years, well, were announced a few years ago, I jumped at the chance. But I don't think there's anything else that's remotely re realistic for it. I've no idea whether these are for the period, but it's a Victorian loco and these are Victorian type coaches. So it's the nearest I'm going to get, I think. First time to open it, I suppose. It's a genuine opening. Look, it's perfectly sealed. I haven't opened it. So again, with the pen knife, just uh, shielding the end of the blade, we'll have a go at sliding it down. Off there, oh, I didn't quite get this end. And this time I've shielded my address so you can't see it. Yeah, look at that, that worked. It's easier for me to walk around the box than it is to turn the box when you've got a camera in one hand and a pen knife in the other. So, what are we going to get? Are we going to get mountains of packaging? Or simple like it was from Kerno? I don't think it's going to be simple like it was from Kerno. The last thing I want is all those white polystyrene commas or whatever they were everywhere. Oh yeah, look at that straight in. That's Andy Eric. All right, now I've got a mixture of four wheel and six wheel, supposedly to make a, a relatively prototypical train of the time, though the bloke was probably guessing as much as I would, because there's not a lot around that actually tells you what, they, what those lo locos actually pulled. So let's have a look what we got. And these have all got lights in, by the way, so I thought, what the hell? It's in focus, isn't it? So. Well, Remove a typical six wheeler, I presume that's a typical six wheeler, and I find a four wheeler to look at based on most of the others will look the same, I suppose. How can you tell in the packaging? They all look about the same length. Oh, there's a four wheeler in there, boxes are all the same length. Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, hiding in the, this corner then. Well, they all look the same length to me, but I know there are four four wheelers in here somewhere. What about these two? Ah, there we go. That's definitely shorter, isn't it? And you put them side by side. And light reflecting everywhere. Yeah, definitely shorter. So. I'm going to have to sit there. Oh, I need to get the pen knife out again. My pocket. All right. So the dexterity of opening the pen knife one hand it comes in handy. Diddy. Right. I have to try and open one of these now. So you put it between your knees. Now, as per last time, can you see? Put it in there. Blunt edge towards the flap and it should just he says will it or won't it there we go turn it round and do the other side hold up and it parallel like that there we go no ripping see it's in good condition fold it back put a knife over there yeah, we've got to try and get it out of the box, haven't we? One-handed. Oh, well, swap ends. That's multitasking for you. And there you come. Oh, there we have. I don't know what is this one out of interest to see and know. What is it? It's a... Uh, hmm, four-wheel, third, third-class... 
doesn't really say much, that's all it says, it's just a third class coach. Okay, and we have a pack of, I must guess by the length of that, that's a running board. We're not going to have this problem with it's focusing on the cabinet behind again, aren't we? Anyway, I reckon that's the, um, the running board, it's like a step. So that, that isn't much more exciting. Uh huh. DCC. Uh, DCC and coaches do we? What are we on about? Have a look. Over the screen. So we have the first page. Or the first paragraph area. And that bit. And whatever that bit is. Uh huh. Okay. Right. Ah, maybe that's if you haven't got lighting and you need to fit it. I don't know. Ah, because mine come with lighting, so I don't know what that's all about. This, this is not a, what do you call it, clamshell. This is just a lid. And off it comes like that. One side. Now, will the finish on this, the renders on the in the magazines and on the various videos around from Hattons showed that their um, teak finish was every bit as good as Hornby's or or the Rapido um, was it Dynamometer car I've got one of them as well alright let's have a look then looking okay as a getting better as the plastic gets out of the way looks pretty convincing so far yeah. the light properly yeah they've actually done it so that each panel the same way I've done a, a, one model I've tried to teak with and got to settle but each panel looks unique as it was in real life that's, that's better than Ormby then probably better than Rapido and all and you, I suppose they looked at theirs and thought I know how we can do this even better and then using them as, theirs as a prototype with a, with a benchmark and improved upon it that looks pretty good. I know how close this thing can get. You see that? Alright. If I pause it a minute. Come on, you focus on it. Yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? I'm not sure you're supposed to turn the lights on. There's no magic wand with it. Unless that... Unless that's what that funny thing was that I thought of for. Oh, ah, I wonder. Because if you look at this, I can definitely see black running where my fingers are. It's got running boards. Or steps or whatever you call those things. The individual parts look pretty good. Let's not drop it. Hang on, that's it. Put it over the table in case I drop it. What's the other end like? Much the same. Lots of steps. Hmm. A better over the grey. See it better. Maybe. Hmm. I'm turn it upside down. Let's see what it's like underneath. It looks like quite a bit of detail there. Eh? All the brake rigging and stuff is all there. And M couplings. The wheels feel like right. they feel free running. Yeah, makes it feel alright. Yeah, that one in. Oh yeah, yeah, it's running. I'll just put it down. I've never touched it. So it hasn't so that's obviously battery powered lights somehow. Well, I assume they are, unless they give me the wrong ones, and these are not ones with lights in. Yeah, that's alright. So that's the four wheel. So I don't need to do the unpackaging for the other one. We'll pause again and get the other one out. Alright, the six wheeler is out of his packet. And those 
long black things are definitely spare running boards. So I don't know why they think you need them. I suppose someone's going to pick it up and break it, they think. Or maybe they broke it themselves and thought, well, better put some extra ones in. But so what's more interesting in this coach is obviously it's a six-wheeler. Now, the design of six-wheelers could be fraught with trouble. I'm going to be doing a video one day of how to get the Hornby Magazine Stove R better, but it just comes off just every time it runs around a bend. It's totally useless. Now, they have got a sliding backwards and forwards mechanism here. It actually feels quite free, which is much better than the, um, say the Stove R, which actually pivoted. Oh, there was no self center in it, pivoted round and just stayed pivoted round and obviously derailed it straight away. Those things, maybe they copied of what Dapo will do on their milk tankers or something. I don't know. I don't own one of those six wheel tankers, but no, I'm just surmising. But that looks all right. Again, I have to do a running session on the, I'll make a big layout with these and we'll see what happens. That was DCC, which my Sterling single has now got DCC sound put in it. They might not run very well on a DC layout, I don't know. I can find out, can't I? Oh. Well, that's pretty good. I'll just check those instructions again, see if they tell you how to turn the lights on. I can't see any obvious pickups from those wheels from the track. There's nothing obviously there. I can see black plastic. Very good black plastic though. The finish is lovely. They've got separately fitted door handles. Can you see that? I'm not sure. Well, well they look pretty good anyway. Yeah, that takes them in. Excellent, isn't it? You need some sort of lights inside because I remember apparently up there in the windows are supposed to be the luggage racks above your head. You put your hat, but I don't know if you can see anything. Hmm. Well, I'll have a quick look at those instructions and see if there's a separate switch you can turn them on like without being on a track. Well, I've just tried to, um, the instructions say to l gently lift up the roof and it will come away from the body. No, that's rammed on there. Oh, I'm not going to, that's almost like it's glued on. It's, it's not even the slightest bit of play. I don't want to break anything. I think I'll have to, I'll have to ring up Hattons and quick query this because there's no instructions on how to turn the lights on. It says you lift off the roof and fit a DCC coder, decoder. Well, surely they'd have done it sorry, similar to how Rapido did. And you just wave a wand, or well, Hornby Horn, Horn have done, just wave a wand over the top. You don't need DCC decoders to turn Victorian style carriage lights on. They're either on or they're off. Hmm. <laughs> I don't want to buy 10 decoders. I'll investigate and add a bit on the end of the video to try and sort that out later. Okay. Let's put them side by side. In fact, I could link them together, couldn't I? Yeah, yeah I caught you. Let me see how far apart are they. Mm. There we go. I don't think it goes. I don't think it will fall off the edge of it. No. Good. Okay. That's a six-wheeler on the track. 
and we found out how the lighting works now. And this is a DC layout. Right, it's on number six. So if you reverse the uh, the, the prototypical blue Deltic up to grab it. <laughs> uh, oh, are the lights on? Are the lights on? They're supposed to be, aren't they? They were on earlier. Can't see. Oh. Your Deltic just moved. Maybe I need to get down on my hands and knees down here and have a look. Of course it's... Are they on? Right, where does it go? It's very blue that Deltic. Oh yeah, there you are. Oh, of course it's DC. As soon as you turn the dip, the loco stops, the lights go out. So all that nonsense about what's it cards for DCC is nonsense for a DC. You go right around the points. I suppose the best way to test this is to push it so it's not being dragged, just being. It doesn't have to look diminutive. Oh, it's come on. Ah, hang on. It's come undone. Oh, what, yeah, come back. So why did it do that? It hasn't pulled the coupling out of the... Out of the Deltic? No, there's no it's, the, the couplings are still in here. Mm. Uh, oop, that's point at the... So what? Sometimes if one of the hooks is uh -huh. not... You have to keep keep going. Keep going to a straight bit. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Let's have a look. Whoop, stop. Is it coupled? Where's my heart? Oh, yeah, well, well, my, well, my eyes can see it. I don't know. How far this thing is focusing that dingy. Yeah, okay. It it look, it? Yeah, it looks like it is, and they're not crossed over. There's no reason why that came undone. So, you know, I'll go and find a lot of points somewhere. There's a big hole in the floor here. Oh, we don't want to go down there, thank you very much. Yeah. Closed sesame. There we go, that's better. I really don't want to fall down there. Let's have a look at it. Ooh. Now the lighting on this bit's not so good, isn't it? Mm. Can we see the lights? Any got lights? Well, they're on. Full power. Yeah, I think you need to go backwards. That'll prove oh, how I'll good it is. Because yeah. things being pulled always behave better than things being pushed. And those six wheels need testing just to prove a point. Yeah, that is one. Strange look looking setup that does. Uh, there's a lot of points there you can bung it through. Yeah, somehow. Yeah. Well, hey, I'll stop it there. Swing it, swing it across to the outer track. Yeah, right, I'll come up, up here then. And there's you the can. Blue controller. The blue controller. I'll take it from there across the blue track. I thought you're the blue controller wearing what you're wearing. <laughs> Right. Oh, ah, that's, not, that's on the move. Yeah. Uh, number three, three, one, two, three. I don't know. You've got a lot of switches. Ah, uh, it's gone the wrong way. Hang on. Well, it hasn't derailed though. No. I thought I'd switch the uh, slip to go across. Ah. Uh, mm. Well, something moved. Yeah, that's gone the right way now. Yeah. Oh, so far, so good. More points up there. And let's set these back. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. What do you do there? Was that your fault or its fault? Uh, oh. I don't know, but we'll find out. Let's go try it again. Uh, and you get the middle rails on it. Right, right, all the wheels are on. You sure about that? Yeah. Mm. Was it a case of you didn't put the sweet seat over, or was it? No, it, it, might, it? it may be a something oh. needs settling. <laughs> Bash me in on your roof. Uh, oh, there's a nice sort of point here. Some 
Mm. Not bad, not bad, is it? Pretty good test, this. Go over your head. Mm. Uh, That's metal. I'll just sw switch Where's it. Where's it gone? There's the station. Uh, there's probably loads of points down here, isn't there? Oh, that heat is packing out. Yeah. I'll switch that off now. Have you? I can still feel it. Yeah, you only need to have it on for half an hour. Oh, there's the lights. Ah, yes, you definitely saw lights there. Yeah. And there. You can see them again there. Oh, yeah. I bet you can actually see it inside of it. Oh, yeah, you can definitely see it there. Oh, okay. No, it's proved it's pretty, pretty good. At, well, just bug it round again for those same points. It, we, I don't know if it was. A, uh, oh, hang on. What? Uh, need to go across that room. That. Like that bit, that's right. done it again. Ooh, yeah. if there's something there it doesn't like. Yeah, okay. Let's uh, bring it back. Well, not too bad considering the amount of points you've got, which is more than most people have got. Yeah, it only takes a fraction of a kink in the join or something. And yeah, I've not come across that before, so there's a. Uh, well, uh, mm, okay. All right, that time. Let's do it again a bit faster. Yeah. Obviously, it's, sometimes it's the end of the point blade, it just wants tapering down a bit, mm. or it's uh, well, that did it, yeah. Uh, and you're not normally pu pushing them, are you? Normally no. pulling them, being a passenger coach, so yeah, gone through that one again, all right. We'll take it around the other way, just uh -huh. around the, around here. No, just a What do you mean, take it round the other way? Around the, around the outer loop for a bit. All oh, right. Yeah. I thought you meant going in with the normal way round. Take it up under there and back, then back onto this. Okay. So I can, you can see the lights on up there. I suppose on DCC you can turn the lights on using the FO uh, key. So it said in the instructions. Yeah. But on DC, you can't see anything because it's always has to be moving to turn the lights on. Unless you burn it on a rolling road, yeah, which is not the sort of thing right. you... Yeah, it's going around that one now, is it? Uh, now the lights should come on, shouldn't they? There they are. Just about see it. Oh, that's not, a, that's not good. <laughs> well, if you just drag it out, that'll probably do it, wouldn't it? Backwards. No. Where is uh, it? Now we're in trouble. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. What do you mean it's done it right behind? No, I knew there was a, a floor and having these sort of overhead things. Yeah. So is there, a, is there a point under there or something? A double slip. Oh my god. What do you put a double slip under there for? Or was it this upper layer not originally planned? No, uh, it was. It was? Yeah. You're mad. Is that in the trunk? Uh, very hard to tell, isn't it, with six wheels? Uh, nothing happening? Uh, no, isn't Oh, I think that it's the leading bogey of the local off as well. well. I can't see a thing. Ah, uh, it is. I can see your hand. See if it'll couple up. Oh, oh there it is. There's the coke. Ah, oh, the lights are on. She gives herself away by the by the lights, doesn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this is why I could do with um lighting. Oh, we've got your hand there. <laughs> to see where the yeah, the yeah. Are. Well, you could can these days. You can just buy the little self adhesive uh, diode things and stick them underneath the wood, couldn't you? Very easily. Do a 12 volt supply from many or many wires. Yeah. 
Uh, you won't, well, 5 volt for the uh, I've got a 5 volt controller set up, uh, transformer set to do it. I'm sure load more wires. Oh. So I'm oh. slowly over that uh, slip this time. All right, it's going through it again, are we? Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, I can't see anything because all your wagons get in the way. Oh, yeah, there's a light. I can just about see it going through. Just, 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 just. Mm. That seems to have gone. Oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, I've got a little bit of fettling to do on some of the track drawings and what have you. Pan out, well, that's probably okay there, isn't it? I'll, I won't take it through there again because in case it comes off. That'll disappear over there. Go back to this route. Mm. So we now have power to the track, no loco pulling it, and the Class 37 Act as a backdrop so you can hopefully see what's in the carriage. Yeah. How close will this thing get? I won't get any closer than that. Put it down like that and I'll tilt the lens backwards. There you go. There you go. You can see the hat luggage rack things. Let's move her sideways and get an idea of that. Oh, I try not to be jerky. And slide it back the other way. And see what's in there. I hope that's in focus. Right, I'll go up a bit. Now can we see inside? What's in there? Uh, obviously red seats. Well, mainly just... Oh, come on, focus. Yeah. That's my angle. There we go then. That's what... It looks like. Now we've discovered in another part of this video, I haven't assembled it yet, so I don't know where it's happened or about to happen. But when you saw the instructions, it mentions you fitting a, a board, a DCC board, for the lighting. I presume that's if you only if you have a DCC layout. But uh, for DC, the instructions mention nothing at all. So it's only while well, I put it on a friend's layout, and he turned, and, and, and nothing out was a DC layout. He turned the voltage up, and the lights came on. Ah, and I've also rang up Hattons to point out that their instructions are a bit not actually clear for people who have bought a lot a, a coach with lighting for a DC layout, and it doesn't mention it whatsoever. So. I'm still going to take the roof off as per the instructions. It is a very, very tight fit and um, you've got to be very careful with it. And Hatton bloke told me how to hold it to remove it or at least to get it started. So let's see what happens then. But before I do that, those running boards, they are running boards and I've no idea why you need a spare one or spare pair. But uh, turn the coach over, and this is most companies will just glue the things on. I'm not even sure they're not actually metal. Let's lift this up a bit. I'm not going to undo them, but they've actually screwed them on with screws, screws the size you'll find it in, almost in a watch or a clock mechanism. Tiny little things now. This, um tool here I'm using to, as a pointer I've got a diameter on the end of about a sixteenth of an inch or 1.5 millimeters just for a comparison now the running board like these things that is screwed on by a little tiny screw there you can see it in the light you can certainly see the one at that end in that other light there there's one there one there and one there. So you need very, very small jeweler screwdrivers to undo those. Plus, there's a screw there, and obviously a similar one there. I presume that's to take the um, the coupling off. 
I don't know. It certainly isn't to take the body off, I don't think. Anyway, it might be, but I'm not going to do that. So one of the things they tell you to do is to take the roof off. Oh, no, another thing. How does a let... I kept going on about there's a wand or something for battery power. It's not. It's power from the track, as I probably just indicated on mate's layout. It's very well disguised, and those wheels, as you know, are very free-running. But I don't know if you can see... They've actually got contacts on the axle points, so the, so the wheel, so the electrical pickup acts also acts as a brass sort of bearing. And you turn it over, and just if you get it in the light right, you can see. I get it there. You can see it on that one. It's always that one. You see that little bit of shininess just there? And I just hit it just there, and that's. The contact going up into the coach, and apparently, I don't know if we can see, oh yeah, there as well. You can see that little shiny line going down there? Well, that's a, a plunger contact. Each corner's got one for the two wheels, both each side, which we'll hopefully find out in a minute. They should, they should really have painted that black, I suppose, or they think it looks like the window frame, but that is not the window frame reflection as these are. That and that, that is actually a bit of metal. Very similar to what this is, I suppose. Poking up like that, out of the floor, to the seats of the roof. And we'll find out in a minute. So, I don't want to hold them on the windows. I've had it uh, with a DAPO Class 22 when I did that, and the wheels, I didn't think, not the wheels, the windows popped out inwards. As you, One thing you can see here, with this new light in here, those door handles are actually... Well, it's either very clever moulding or separately fitted bits, whatever they are, they are they have got a hole in them as you can see. Uh, where the hand would go round. So it's not a, it's not moulded into the bodywork. So I'm gonna hold it here. And he said it happens to use your fingernail and pull up initially on the middle of the roof, not on the corner. So this well hopefully the fo focus will do this. And it, I'll be very careful how I hold it without damaging anything. He said something. It's a trick. It's getting in here. He said, "Hold it there." And something should happen. Uh, nothing much is happening, is it? Let's try the other end. There's left. Uh, there was always something to. It's a wire you can break off. Oh dear. How do we get in here? He said, "Get in." Let me hold it like that then. Somehow I've got to get my fingernail in there and move it. Oh, you heard a noise. Uh, oh, too close. This is a fair. Oh, something moved. Just. I have no idea if it's focusing on this. This is not easy, is it? If you can't put your bear down on the bottom here, you'll break all. This is all brake rods and things. You can't push on that. You really want a bear down so you put your little finger to. Stop the thing twisting around as you're holding it. That was bells. I oh, know. Put it like that. Put that down there like that. And I'll support the bottom of it. I'll get my fingernail underneath it. Ah! There you go. You ram your fingernail under there. And using your thumb, you just pull on that bit. I got their tolerances too tight. Okay, that's starting to move. Ha ha. Oop, what's that side? Now carefully turn it over. Using hey, there we go. Ha uh ha. -huh. And there's the racks. Look at this. I can see inside. I don't know what those little half moony bits are at the bottom. Hmm. Anyway. So the seats are painted red, which I showed you in the video. My mate's layout. I'll put that down. Oh, there is a big capacitor there. It's supposed to be a stay alive, I'd say, but 
from what I experienced on my mate's layout, <laughs> I stay alive didn't stay alive very long. That's the capacitor. Barrel shaped thing here. Alright, so there's a screw there, a screw there, a screw there, and a screw there. So using my uh -huh, flat screwdriver, because I don't actually have, let's have a look. Get it in there. Maybe the next size up. Yeah, that one should do it. Push it again carefully. Be very careful with these types of screwdrivers on printed circuit board. You can't probably see there's track underneath there, but under this green varnish. Now I've, I've worked on it in aerospace. I've designed a few printed circuit boards. I know, and a, a green varnish hides track. And we outlawed um, use of flat screwdrivers because they can suddenly slip and act like a chisel and go straight across and break the track. Uh, this is a very a genuine jeweler screwdriver, not those things they sell as jeweler screwdrivers, which are not. Uh, put, this, put them somewhere safe in there. And you turn the screw very slowly, you don't force it. So it should give. If it doesn't give, tighten it a bit. It doesn't want to. Oh, there you go. Very careful. I don't ruin my, my model just for this video. There you go, that loosen that one. Uh, another one here, I think. This is just so you can. I can can't see it in a minute. I think I'll do about that. All right, put the screws out of the way. And also with pretty circuit boards, avoid handling them as much as possible. Especially avoid wearing nylon type clothing while you're doing it. That or anything that gives static electricity because that can ruin the board and blow up any chips. I turn over, uh huh. I'm not going to remove the blanking plate, but what have we got? What can you see? That's the blanking plate. So turn it sideways, you'll see it's there. It plugs in a very fine, I don't know, six, eight pin decoder thingy under there. But that's what you're supposed to use. So the DC, they're sold for DC use by the looks of it. That's not, as per the picture on the instructions, that shows electronic components. See? Lots of little squares and blob lumps. That's the electronic components on a DCC board. But what we got here, we just, what you see, what it's just text, it's just, there's nothing there. See, it's plain. Nothing on top of that board. I'm supposed to be using this as a point, aren't I? Yeah, nothing there at all. So that's a blanking plate. Well, I think the instructions should make it a bit more clearer. They've made the assumption that people with DC know what they're talking about. Know about all this stuff. Ah, ah. Now, if I talk about, about, about the varnish, very dark green. But I've turned it in the light, now you can see the track work. Those lines with 40 to 5 degree angles. Uh, any screwdriver going across that will, will cut straight through that very thin track. It's, extra on the surface of the glass board. It's basically glass fibre sheet. That's what PCBs are. So there we go. So down the bottom here must be... Oh yeah. So we've got those uh, these contact things which are very similar to that, aren't they? See, very similar. Down the bottom there, they're, they're not. Well, I don't think they're sprung loaded. That's, so I poke that. Uh, there's a piece of um, contact um, flat sprung. Well, I presume it's uh, beryllium copper or something like that, phosphor bronze type wiper contact, but it's, it's sticking up like that. I have to do it with my finger. It's sticking up at an angle like that. There's the that's flat, 
like that sticking up and then the pr prong comes down and it springs like that so it, it main spring pressure on the on that not the best at indicator you can see it better like that so it's angled up and that thing pushes down so it pushing back on each other making contact that's the best demonstration i can do with what's going on i can probably see it the, the, the camera will pick that up get the lighting just won't work uh, i can't get the lighting down there oops no uh, that angle will that do it the other lamp i don't know what this thing can pick up ah there it is just about see at the bottom there right in that corner there as if this was the thing going down it goes down and it presses like a little spring plunger just there yeah reasonable idea so put those bits down there's a roof main robust enough the clips are not going to break off too easily because that's what can happen with these things well, these things can snap off if you manhandle them too big and never tighten the screws up too tight because they're only very small self tappers which means the more you turn them the more they keep driving in until the 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 boss snaps because they're slightly tapered and they just keep burrowing in burrowing in until it bursts the sides out so you nip them up and you stop you don't go and half a turn for luck never do that so it's okay for uh, machine screws and, and bolts but it's no good for self tappers especially in plastic or wood how many times do you see carpentry where they've split out because they've tightened them too much with their electric drill driver and i should have done it by hand gently okay right i'll assemble it you don't need to see me reassemble it do you or do you oh we'll do especially the screws yeah maybe it's best and make sure you get the right way ah now we got a problem haven't we have i just spotted a flaw here this roof is polarized i mean that end is different from that end now this thing has those instructions they don't show that yeah the instructions here fail to show there the capacitor to know which end it goes you know miss a trick there beware of that i have no idea whether this if you get the, the polarity of dials the wrong way around oh it shouldn't matter though should it because when you turn them the um the controller the other way the voltage changes so the positive becomes negative negative becomes positive so it should work both ways but the idea is does it matter if the, if the capacitor is that end or that end i'm thinking it doesn't ma matter at all Now this end, obviously here, that, that pipe there, has got to not go with that end. It's got to go with this end and pretend to be a continuation of that pipe there, I think. Yeah, so this goes, see there, like that. See, I see those two parts marry up. So you don't make sure you put it the right way around, so it's not that way. It's that way now obviously each coach is slightly different but always be aware of po polarization it means polarization means <coughs> differences at each end or differences one side to another that's why a battery is called polarized positive one end negative the other anyway so we put this this way around and i will put the screws back oh, let's see my video is always longer than a lot of other people because I tell you the minor details. That's one thing I do it for. These the little details that matter. Now, I can't hold that very well. So, another tool comes into play. The sticky pickup tool. Is there a magnetic screwdriver would be better? Oops, back in the middle of the screen. 
if you can get the thing to let go, there you go, and then you should be able to put the screwdriver in. Right, there's another way of doing this, another special tool, where is it? There it is. I think I've shown you another one of these, and you can hold the screws. Like that. You see it? And if you hold it over the hole, go on. I'm let go then, see? So I'm going to pick it up with the sticky thing initially, try to, hmm, easier said than done, no, right, that doesn't work, so, really, let's do it the old fashioned way, using my hands, and then put it in there, like that, that's it, hold it like that, I haven't finished doing it, I'll just put them in to get them started. the last screw in. Now, I have to use a screw, I can't do it with that uh, capacitor sticking up there. And turn it around. Right there. Put my finger on the or to stop it moving about. Let go now. Right now. They all need to be screwed down and nipped up. So it stops and you stop. You do not do that extra half turn. You stop. Feel resistance, stop, no more. There you go. Now, now to put this back in here, as I said before, get that pipe there. Let's get that out of the way now. And the wrong end, not that end. That's the end of the pipe. Ooh. Not the camera. That pipe is there. So carefully align these contact posts, or what you want to call them. Down there, down there. And there they go. See, they come together just there. I put it down like that. I just click it down. Bang, like that. Yep, that's down each end, nice and neat. Yep. Now, as this is DCC, I'm going to do the 9 volt test, 9 volt battery, because the contacts doesn't again doesn't matter which way around. Now, to make sure they work, it's wise to do this. Turn it, turn it upside down, and they should light up. Hopefully, if we've done it right. There we go. Look at that. Now, when I let go. See, they don't go straight off fast, they go off a oh, cool. good quarter second there. And that's because of that capacitor, but quarter second's no good, you want two or three seconds, don't you? So you need about five or six of those capacitors to actually be of any real use, on DC anyway. And when you've got a whole rake on, that becomes a chore. <clears throat> so, um, 
Oh, that's probably why the DCC option is there. So if you haven't got a DCC layout, it doesn't help you much, does it? But anyway, okay, that's another way of doing it. I'm not sure I prefer the battery one, thinking about it, but my opinion on that changes from time to time. One day all the batteries are going to go dead, aren't they? <laughs> and you've got loads of batteries to change. Like on the, uh, the new Hornby Midland Pullman carriages that I reviewed the other day. So, I'll put it that way down. I'll put it down there. And that'll do for this bit. 